Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we will learn the important concept of transactions in Kafka. We will see what are Kafka transactions and we will also do a quick hands-on demo on the Kafka transactions. So let's get started. So far in this series, we have been working with typical Kafka producers and consumers. And so we understand that a Kafka producer typically send messages to different topics independently. What that means is suppose in this example, we have the Kafka up and running and we have two topics T1 and T2. Then we have a producer P1 for example. So by independently we mean when the producer is sending events to Kafka to different topics, it can send event to let's say T1 and then it can send the same event to another topic which is T2. There is no relation between T1 and T2 here. Okay. So this activity is totally independent of this activity. These two are not related. But sometimes there is a need to ensure the atomicity in this scenario. What I mean by that is suppose we have a producer and that producer is sending multiple events or messages to Kafka. Then we need either all the messages are delivered to Kafka successfully or none are delivered. And this atomicity is achieved using the Kafka transactions. So Kafka transactions enable the producer to send all the events or messages to Kafka either atomically or none of the events are sent. So if we take the same example here E1 and E2 were earlier sent independently but using Kafka transactions we can implement a solution where we will say either both the events are sent to Kafka or none of them are sent to Kafka. So that means Kafka transactions will monitor if this E1 was sent to T1 and this E2 was sent to T2 successfully then only this transmission would take place otherwise the whole transaction will be aborted and none of the events will be sent to either T1 or T2. Now this can be very useful in scenarios for example where we are implementing the financial transactions. So depending on the transaction let's say we are generating different events to different topics for example for credit and debit and we want all of them to succeed atomically. Or let's say we have a scenario where we have multiple topics like T1, T2 and T3 and we are generating related events to all these topics and we want that either all the updates succeed or fail. In those scenarios we can use Kafka transactions. Before we move on with the demo there are two prerequisites with the Kafka transactions that we will cover now. So the first one is there is one configuration that we need to set when we are developing the producer and that is X. Now we understand the X parameter in the configuration determines how many acknowledgements the producer needs to consider an event as successfully sent. What that means is when a producer is sending an event to Kafka, there are different in sync replicas in Kafka and the producer has the flexibility to wait for the acknowledgement from the Kafka brokers. So the producer may choose to wait for all the in sync replicas which means X equals to all or it can define for example x equal to 1. In that case it will only wait for the leader of that partition. And depending on the acknowledgements received, the event will be considered as sent successfully or not. Now when it comes to Kafka transactions, the prerequisite is that the producer must set the x property to all. That means the producer must wait for the acknowledgement from all the in sync replicas. And the producer must confirm that all the in sync replicas have received the event or the message before it can be considered a part of the transaction. And this is important because without x equal to all property, a message could actually be lost. So let's say there is this leader broker which crashed. Now it will lose the message and it will also break the transactional boundary because we might think that under the hood, there was one crashed broker which did not receive the message. So it breaks the transactional guarantee that either all the events will be sent to all the relevant replicas or none of them are delivered to the Kafka. And that is why setting X equal to all is a mandatory requirement for Kafka transactions. And the second mandatory property is transactional.id. Alright, so when we deal with Kafka transaction, it actually requires some level of coordination between the Kafka brokers and the producer which is sending the events to multiple topics. Now this transactional ID is actually a unique identifier for that transactional producer. And without this ID, the Kafka brokers do not know anything about this producer. So the producer cannot participate in the transactions. And that is why we need to set this ID so that the Kafka producer and the related transactions can be tracked across the cluster 
and the Kafka's transactional coordinator can work with that producer and the related transactions. Because the coordinator, the transaction coordinator is the one which manages the state of the transaction across the Kafka cluster and for that it needs this ID to uniquely identify a transactional producer. Let's move on and see it in action. To save some time, I have set up the project already. This is a very simple Java project without any Spring dependency. So let's see the pom.xml and if you check out the pom.xml, we have the plain Kafka clients dependency. And then I added a new class for the transactional producer and it has the basic properties for same as any other producer and then we instantiated the Kafka producer. But we are not doing anything else which we will develop together. Now as we discussed we need two mandatory properties for any transactional producer. The first one is X and the second one is transaction ID. So let's configure these two mandatory properties. So the first one is X. producer config dot x and as we discussed it must be all because we need to wait for the acknowledgement from all the in sync replicas and the second property is p dot put producer config dot transactional dot id this is the one and this can be any string because it just uniquely identifies the producer so you are free to provide any string as the id so for example, we can say Kafka hyphen transaction, that's it. So we have now provided all the required configs to the Kafka producer. And we also have the object of the Kafka producer. So let's try to uh, send some events to multiple topics within the boundary of a transaction. How do we do that? The first step is we init the transaction. All right. Then we begin the transaction. Then we do the job. Then we commit the transaction. And then in the end, we can abort the transaction depending on whether or not we received an error. So we will see what is the difference between init the transaction and begin the transaction. But for now, let's move on with the demo. So, how do we init the transaction? Once we have the object of the producer, we can call init transaction method on the producer that will init the transaction. Then using the same producer object, we can actually begin the transaction. But for that, let's use the try catch block. Something like this. So to begin the transaction, we use the same producer object and we call the method begin transaction. All right. After that, we do the task, we perform the task. Now, in this case, we know that the task is sending the events to multiple topics. And how do we send an event to topic? We know that we use the producer object and we call the method send. Then we pass the object of a producer record. So we will create a producer record here. Now, producer record requires the topic to which this event will be sent. And we will create a topic with name topic A. And the event will be, we will only pass the value, we will not provide the key. And because if you notice, we are using string serializer for keys and values, that means we are dealing with string values. So we will send a simple event, in this case, a simple string message, let's say event one. And similarly, we will send another message to another topic, in this case, topic B. And this will be event two. And then we commit the transaction. Once we do the job, we commit the transaction and then in the cache block, let's say there is an error. In that case, we abort the transaction. How do we do that? We call producer dot abort transactions. So this is the error handling like this. Now, what will happen in this case? When we work with Kafka transactions, you can see we are actually sending two events to different topics, which is topic A and topic B. And then we are committing the transaction. What that means is suppose if these events can be sent to topic A and topic B successfully, then only both the topics will receive the event. Otherwise, let's say you successfully send the message to topic A, but there was some error while sending the message to topic B, then the entire transaction will be aborted and none of the topics will receive any message. 
So these messages event 1 and event 2 will be sent to topic A and topic B only if the transaction can be completed successfully. That is the power of Kafka transactions same as any other transaction. And to keep the main thread running, I will simply start an infinite loop for now so that I can monitor the behavior from the consumer. That's it. All right. So we have the producer ready, which is using Kafka transactions for sending multiple events to different topics. The next step is to create the topic. So we will go to the Docker desktop and we will start a new Kafka container. And we will name it Kafka transactions. And I will bind the same host port and we'll start a new Kafka container. And we can see that the Kafka is up. So let's start by adding new topics. So we will go to the exec tab. And we have the topic 8. Similarly, we will also create the second topic, which is topic B. So we have the topics ready and we also have the producer ready. But how do we verify it? And for that, we will use console consumer, which ships with Kafka. So let's see how can we start a Kafka console consumer. Now, because we have two topics, so we will start two Kafka console consumers. One will read from topic A and another one will read from topic B. So let's start our first Kafka console consumer for topic A. We are in the bin directory, so we can say Kafka hyphen console consumer topic name of the topic. So this consumer will read from topic A and the bootstrap server. And this will start the first Kafka console consumer. Now we have to run another Kafka console consumer. So what I will do, I will go to the command prompt and I will run the second consumer from there. And now in this window, what I will do, because I have to connect to this Docker container, I will run Docker ps command. And this is the Docker container, which is currently running. So I will enter into this uh, Docker container by running the command docker exec hyphen it. And then the ID of this container like this and the command sh. So that will give me access to the terminal, to the shell terminal of this Docker container, same as what I was doing from Docker desktop. All right. Then I can run the same command uh, from this uh, command prompt for the second console consumer. So I will go to the same directory opt Kafka bin. Kafka console consumer topic. It will be second topic, topic B. And it started the second console consumer. Now, what we will do, we will start the producer. So we can start the producer now. Let's run the producer. So we have the producer up and running. Let's check the consumers if they got the messages. So we will check the console consumer one first, which is reading data from topic A. And we can see that it has got the message event one. If we go to the second consumer, which is reading data from topic B, we can see that it also got the message, which is event two. Now, if we notice, if we go back to the code, if we notice, we have not committed the transaction. So we started the transaction. Then we sent the messages to both the topics but we have not committed the transaction and even then the console consumers got the messages. So why is it happening that even though the transaction was not committed, even then the console consumers got the messages from the topics because messages are sent to the topics only when the transaction is committed, which is not happening in this case. Well, the reason behind that is Kafka console consumers can read the uncommitted transactional messages. That means even though the transaction was not committed, they can still read the events from the topics even though they are in the uncommitted state. So how can we fix it? Well, there are two ways, especially with the case of console consumers. A, 
we have to run the console consumers again with a configuration that we will force the console consumers to read only the committed values only the committed transactions and second the correct way would be to commit the transaction in the code so first let's check the console consumer part we will force the console consumers to read the committed transactions only so what i will do we will go to the uh, kafka terminal and we will kill the consumer and we will restart the consumer but this time we will also define the isolation level which is read committed that means we are now telling the console consumer to read the committed messages only only the transactions which have been committed so let's start the first consumer and we will do the same thing with the second consumer and we have both the consumers up and running and we will go back to the producer let's kill the producer and we will change the message so let's uh, change the message to 3 and 4 and notice we are still not committing the transaction but so this time when we run the producer because we have set the isolation level on the consumers the consumers should not get the messages so let's run the producer and the producer is up let's check the consumers and we can see the consumers are not reading the messages anymore because we have configured the isolation level so this time because we have set the isolation level the consumers will only read the committed transactions and in the producer we have not committed the transaction so they cannot read the messages so to verify this i will close the producer again and this time we will also commit the transaction so we will say producer dot commit transaction and let's rerun the producer the producer is up let's check the consumers and you can see the messages are now coming to the console consumers with the updated isolation level this time they can read the messages because we have successfully or correctly committed the transaction now there is one more thing that we will cover so if we check the producer code let me kill the producer first so if we check the producer code there are two similar looking methods init transactions and begin transaction so what is the difference between these two methods the difference between these two methods is that we call the init transactions method only once when we call the init transactions method it initializes the transactional support for the producer it sorts of registers the producer with the Kafka's transaction coordinator. So it must be called only once. But if we talk about the begin transaction method, it represents the start of a new transaction. So anytime we want to create a new transaction, we call the begin transaction method. So this method must be called whenever we are starting a new transaction. So in a nutshell, this method must be called only once and this method can be called as many times as we want, as long as we want to create a new transaction. So that's all for this video. In this video, we learned the Kafka transactions and we saw how can we enforce the atomicity across multiple topics when the producer is sending multiple events to different topics in one go. We also learned how can we use methods like init transactions, begin transaction and how to commit or abort the transaction. So that is for now and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.